Hi guys, it's Camille here and I'm coming to you with the Lit Talk, a monthly talkative segment on my channel What Camille Reads and today we will try to build it following a month when I mainly worked. The highlight of the work part was my trip to Cairo, Egypt, my business trip to Cairo, Egypt. I also passed another SEMA exam, which always takes me quite a few days because it requires going through 600 pages, textbook plus exercise book, so that's a bit of work. I also traveled to Naples for pleasure for four days. During that visit I went to Amalfi Coast and the whole trip was fantastic. I'm enumerating all of that elements to justify the fact that I barely read this month because most of the time I spent studying or traveling. I did the minimum though. I managed to reread Crime and Punishment for my project where every month till the end of the year I read a book that I loved being in my late teenage years and early 20s. This was the book for August. Fyodor traveled with me to Naples and we took quite a few pictures together. He was a bit moody sometimes, overly dark companion, but he sparked the whole trip with his wit and storytelling skills. So all in all we had a good time. More about my experience of rereading this one and the whole background of the book will come up next Saturday. So stay tuned for that if you are interested. I started also reading Fyodor Dostoevsky's The Idiot and that's about it as for my Dostoevsky project. And considering I have decided to take another SEMA exam in September, so another 600 pages of textbook to go through and then some exercise and then the, the whole exam thing and the work is intensive again, I will probably read him mostly and three to four other books maximum. I'd like to start also Piesse by Dostoevsky, Demons, the English title. The rest will continue through October and November, the rest as for Dostoevsky project, which comes handy as I'm going to Russia again for work in October. Not to Peter, but to Moscow, nonetheless, it's still Russia, right? By the way, Peter is the Russian abbreviation for St. Petersburg. As per abbreviations, by the way, I was very surprised hearing Egyptian calling Alexandria as Alex. Of course, thinking about it, it makes sense, but that's very westernized. Nonetheless, it's, it sounds good, so Alex is Alexandria. But getting back to the topic, I'm still more optimistic this month as far as my reading is considered. As I'm not traveling anywhere, neither for work nor for pleasure, I love traveling, obviously, but it affects my reading. As the plane is the only place where I read if I travel for work. I have no other time for that. And talking about the planes, coming back from Cairo, I've read From a Low and Quiet Sea by Ryan Donnell, a Man Booker 2018 long-listed book, one of which I've heard tons of good things, and due to it having a migration theme, I thought it might be my, or at least one of my favorites from the list. Great writing, the rest unfortunately was a bit too topical, while in the same time felt archetypical, especially the refugee story, and quite detached. The characters felt, even if it was uh, intended, too accidentally connected, which adds to the whole feeling of unbelievability. The opening paragraph when he talks about trees being connected through the network of roots and passing over the necessary nutrients to the one that needed the most was beautifully written, but it felt like a copy-paste from The Secret Life of Trees. Paradoxically, the story I was the most uninvolved with, Lampy's story, ranked the truest, while the one that struck me the most, 
the lobbyist, was the most unbelievable. So something's not right here. The opening story, the refugee one, is written more like a myth, uh, which I guess was intended, taking into account that Farouk, the main character, escapes into the folk stories after the terrible accident that happened when they were escaping Syria. Also, I've read it on Goodreads that the author actually took the refugee part from a newspaper report. So I guess while he was afraid of writing a non-fiction, he took it and mythologized it. So I can understand that. However, when you take such a topical storyline nowadays and put it into your book without making it a standout, not necessarily in terms of a plot, but at least in depth, be it social or psychological, it's just a lot short and wasted opportunity. And it's just another plot line alike to so many other books that currently take on the refugee crisis, right? So overall a bit of a mess, even though I do agree obviously with the message and I sympathize with the ethics behind it, judging it on the literary merits, I feel like this is not a great work. The writing is great though. Coming back to my September reading plans, aside of The Idiot by Dostoevsky, September is the month where I will read Murakami's Norwegian Wood. Yes, another one being part of my project of rereading books that I loved when I was younger. This is the one I'll try to be gentle with. Even though I do think this is his best work, at least as far as I am considered, when, when it comes to Murakami, I would have to be 20 again and again feel special while misunderstood to enjoy him. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm kind of looking forward to revisit his sort of sentimentality. Aside of that, I will read Sabrina by Nick Drnaso and I'm thinking about not planning, so that not that face yet, but thinking about picking up Olga Tokarczuk's Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. It just released or being released in the English-speaking world and I believe I have not read this one yet. Um, Polish title, if anybody is interested, is Prowadź swój pług przez kości umarłych. So English title is a good translation of it. I can you know, approve that. <laughs> there was a widely talked about movie also, if you are interested, last year, released last year, based on this book. So if you are interested, I will link the trailer down in the box below and check it out if you are a fan of Olga. English title of the movie, I believe, is Poor. Link down below. The last thing I wanted to mention I'm listening to the history of the world literature from the series of the great curses. Curses, right? Not curses. <laughs> and I had to restrain myself from starting another project when I was uh, listening to it. Rereading or reading the classical text mentioned in the first part of the lectures. So maybe next year I'll try to read Epic of Gilgamesh, reread Iliad and Odyssey, read or reread some of Greek tragedies, read Book of Genesis, uh, Virgil's, Anait. That would be great if one had only all the time in the world. I would do it now, but if I cannot do it now, I might do it next year. I will see. Okay, guys, that's all. Talk with me down in the comments below. I know that my energy level wasn't the highest during that video, but I'm a bit, you know, struggling with the time pressure right now. So let me know how you deal with uh, your busy schedules and reading. What are you reading currently? What are your plans? What were your highlights from the last month? And I talk to you soon. Bye bye, guys.